everyone. Okay, so one big narrative point to talk about with this episode is immediately upon making their way through Dragon's Compound, they immediately come face to face with Master Noah himself, or a projection of him, who outright readily admits that, yeah, he is the one who put Rebecca and the crew in this situation, but ultimately, he didn't even really have malicious intent for it. It's just that he he foresaw that ultimately they are the only ones who can defeat who can defeat Dragon it, who can defeat Dragon Joe. Like everything he did, everything he did all all the way from 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 trapping Rebecca back on Gilst, it wasn't for the purpose of like wanting to kill her or wanting. Or, or wanting to entrap Rebecca, he just needed her to grow stronger in order to finally awaken her power, because awakening her power was what was needed, is what's needed to defeat Dragon Joe in this current timeline. As, and, and, and with that, and with that, he himself also lays his cards on the table, as revealing his own, he has his ether gear as the Eye of God, which, which, which is basically a power he can use to basically spy on everyone and everything, Everyone and everything except for machines, and and that's more or less how he how he foresaw how how he learned of Rebecca's power, and again foresaw that that power might have been the only thing that could defeat him, defeat Joe. While also reaffirming to them that this is and on top of all that though, I like how well, on top of that though Noah also reaffirms that this is their one and only chance to to pull this off if like if they. If they lose here, it's over. And for what little it's worth, I do appreciate the the narrative bit narrative bits like that, to, like that, that really set the stakes of like of, of affirming to us that yeah, it, we're in a situation now. Like unlike before, where Rebecca awakened her powers subconsciously, Rebecca has fully awakened her powers and is now conscious of them. So it's also so so it does make so it's just. So they have to win here, otherwise Draken wins. And <clears throat> and I and I, I think in, in doing it this way, it also does make the major beatdown from here on a little more warranted. Like I'm not gonna say like the Dragon Joe is gonna go down easy, but it is one of those things where it's like everything from here is gonna seem a touch bit easier than, than it was before here now. Um, <clears throat> also Looking back on this moment in a vacuum, it does make me wonder if Noel was at all aware of Rebecca's true origins. I mean, I know that Mashma has made it, made it much, made it clear, made it clear and known to us that he only really planned out half of the story of Eden Zero, and and everything else is him just kind of, just is is him is him is him just kind is is him just just, just from weaving threads together of of events that that, that he that he. That, that he already planned out in the first half, so it does. So even though, and and in certain ways that that definitely makes us and and that definitely may and with with him only having planned out uh, only one half of the story, it definitely makes a certain reveal much later into the series definitely definitely more apparent. But definitely make that that more apparent. But again, looking back on this moment in particular, it's. It's piqued my curiosity and has me wondering now if 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 that's the one if if this if that's the one narrative beat in the second half of the story he actually planned or just made or just made logical sense at the time in order in order to tie those threads together like this this whole thing with Noah as well kind of leaves me wondering if Mashima did have greater plans for the character in in, in the future but ultimately had to stop had to scrap them because as i as i had said there, there, there's a reveal much later in the series that's uh, that honestly could have been part of an entirely separate story arc rather than the one it's in and even more so this this theoretical arc could would have i think been perfect for noah as well given his powers can't track mechanical beings so he'd have to resort to other means it's it's it fits a little too perfectly in my opinion um all that, all that to the side, though, the episode does set up the major fights with the Starshines immediately jumping into the battle against Dragon's Element 4, and once again, it's one of those things where it makes you, like, wonder just how different thing, different would that first go-around have been had the Starshines gotten more involved from the beginning, because no offense to Shiki and the others, but having served under Ziggy, the Starshines are kind of the more experienced among the entire crew, 
whether that's tactics, strategy, combat, they 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 they, they pretty much are like are, are are the elite fighters in the crew. Better, like they're honestly just kind of better at it than Shiki and Rebecca and Weiss are. So it it only makes sense for them to to be up against dragons, more elite soldiers in the element for it. I like how something as simple as this is a nice bit of visual storytelling, showing that the mistakes the crew did make in in the in World Twenty Nine, and now they're kind of like kind of remedying that in World 30. Of course, on a more base level, just seeing Homer, a witch, Hermit, and Ivory just requip into their battle dress outfits, it's always a joy to see that, whether it's anime or manga, and Ivory's battle dress will always be a personal fave of mine, although the idea of her resisting the urge to torture for 10 years? Yeah, that's just legitimately terrifying, knowing what we know about her. Like, and I also... I also really love how, as the episode goes on, you can see just how much Hermit basically had the dead to rights. Like the moment they, the moment they crossed, the, the moment they crossed blades or whatever, crossed, crossed swords or whatever, or just crossed, crossed paths in general. Like Hermit had this battle locked and loaded. It, it like the, the, there wasn't even a competition. Her power was basically perfect in order for her to, in order for to, for him, for her to out outmaneuver him and. It works. I like how it, it does work so. I, even though the fight was very quick, I like how the, it still does work so well because of the nature of her ability. Like her, her entire, her entire theme, her entire ability is the ability to hack into whatever, to whatever machine she's using. And the fact that most, even most weapons are machine based, yeah, it just made things kind of, e like like Fee just kind of made things way too easy for Hermit in that case. Um, now, one thing I forgot to mention last week that I will hear is I like how we see Rebecca's development through her unwavering desire to save Lobelia in in both last episode and this episode. Like, by all rights, Rebecca should hate her and leave Lobelia to die. That girl has done nothing but bully bully her. Lobelia has done nothing but bully Rebecca into into oblivion. But in some ways, you could say she understands it makes it takes more strength to be kind than it does to hate someone. Rebecca, like. And Rebecca kind of has it. May, it may make Rebecca a bit of too perfect and a little bit of a goody two shoes, but I think I think there is a lesson to be learned in being kind to others rather than just holding grudges or whatnot. Um, Rebecca aside, though, we also get a very interesting moment with Weiss, where upon hearing that Draken Joe has a device that maintains his youth and that he's nicknamed Undead Joe. You see how it kind of sparks something in his mind, like it, it jogs something in his memory, but but he can't entirely pinpoint it yet. And yeah, this is where the stories start to intertwine a bit, and it's gonna make like it's gonna make last week's, it's gonna make a uh, like the, the couple episodes back where uh, the couple episodes back where Drac and Joe had had uh, had had Weiss's arm cut off. Yeah, that's. This is where things are gonna all like yeah that's where things are all gonna make way too much fucking sense, <laughs> like it's it it this is where every everything Mashma has set up through, through character introduction is and through the stories that have been told up to this point that's where it, that's where it starts to intertwine with Weiss kind of thing, um, now pacing wise this is one of those odd episodes where it feels like the team kind of. <sighs> This is one of those episodes where it does feel like the team condensed and stretched the couple episodes they adapted to make it, like, they wanted to make this those three episodes fit within this one episode, where, because where the episode ends, it does feel like they could have adapted more, but are really wanting to end this arc at a certain episode count, and are now are just struggling to, to, in order to get to get to that very specific goal post point. So in that sense, I guess you could say my fears about the season are kind of becoming a little justified, because as I had said in previous episodes, this arc, while amazing is in its, in its own right, is also the jumping off point for shit to really hit the fan at every turn, and so that makes me believe, believe Foresta is the arc they're shooting for in terms of where they want to end this season. So to do that, I think they did need to make a little bit of a sacrifice in pacing in pacing of this of this arc in order to make that happen. On that note as well, though, I think the anime 
could have gotten a little more creative in how they conveyed the information Noel was telling them, telling the crew about all that he knows about his power, all that. Because if you're going to make a large portion of the episode just a conversation, then find a way to engage people. Take advantage of the fact that it's a visual medium. Like the, the, the only, the, like the only reason the team meeting worked worked last episode is he had the personalities of the characters bouncing off each other. This this didn't have that as much, especially since they also re reused footage. But yeah, but. Yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Analyst Control. Be sure to hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, and just sit around, guys. Dark Knight of Money, signing off. Later, everyone.